Hi friends, today I will explain about data loading in Snowflake. What is data loading? What are the loading types? How we can transform the data while loading into Snowflake? Okay, we'll see today theoretically and practically. Okay. So agenda for today's session is what are the load types? What is bulk load and what is continuous loading? How we can prepare a copy command to load the data? and how we can transform the data. That means how we can apply the transformations while loading the data from external stages or internal stages to Snowflake tables. We'll see today. So there are two types of loads in uh, data loads in Snowflake. One is uh, bulk loading and second one is continuous loading. So bulk loading we do by using copy command. For continuous loading, we use by using snow pipe okay we'll see in detail first we'll see what is bulk loading okay uh, how we do bulk loading by using a copy command we'll see okay so this option th that means this bulk load enables loading batches of data from files already available in cloud storage okay suppose i have files available in the external storage providers like Google or Azure or AWS S3 buckets okay so how we can load the data uh, by extracting the data from those files and load the data into snowflake okay so we have to create stage storage integration objects to extract the data from these cloud storages okay Th this is the concept there is a concept called storage integration uh, that is the integration point between the external storage provider and our snowflake database okay so we have to create the storage integration object then we have to create external stages okay by using this external stages only uh, we can load the data into snowflake external stages are nothing but uh, the storage locations on the external storage pro providers okay so we'll see how we can load the data okay from external stage uh, uh, like aws or azure to snowflake okay by using a copy command there is one more thing suppose uh, i have so many files present in my uh, linux or unix server okay they are not present on the uh, so external uh, cloud storage providers okay but i have files on my internal internal unix or linux servers okay how we can copy the data or otherwise i have files on my desktop now i want to load those files into snowflake tables how we can do so we can do that by using a concept called internal stage okay so we can uh, copying data files from a local machine to an internal stage before loading the data into a table this is one option okay so first we have to push those files from um, uh, from our windows or linux server to internal stage of snowflake okay so we we will use uh, put command for that by using put command we can push the files from our local uh, desktop or from any uh, linux or unix server to internal stage okay so from there we can load the files uh, to snowflake uh, tables by using the copy command again so there are two ways of loading the uh, there are two ways of doing the bulk load one is from external stages that means from external uh, cloud storage provider provider locations to snowflake the second one is from our local desktop or uh, our unix servers to snowflake for external stages we use uh, for, to load the data from external cloud storage providers to snowflake we use external stages concept and to load the data from local machines to uh, snowflake we use internal stages concept in my next videos i will clearly explain how to create external stages okay and how to create internal stages and how we can do uh, how we can put the files into internal stages and what are the types of internal stages i will explain clearly in my next videos okay so and uh, let's come back to bulk loading okay bulk loading uses virtual warehouses so if we want to uh, if we want to load the data from external or internal stages to snowflake definitely we have to make use of our virtual warehouses to run those copy commands okay users are required to size the warehouse appropriately to accommodate expected loads using the copy command yes so if we want to 
process large files and load the data into snowflake tables we have to choose our warehouse size appropriately okay and we have more number of jobs they are running concurrently then we have to set uh, we have to create a multi cluster warehouse so that our so that we can avoid the copy commands or sql queries going into queues okay so we have to select appropriate warehouse size so what is continuous loading so i will explain in the next slides how we can prepare a copy command to load the data from external or internal stages to snowflake tables okay first let's see what is continuous loading okay so there is a concept called snow pipe okay in snowflake we use snow pipes to load the data continuously from uh, uh, external storage providers to our snowflake tables okay suppose uh, first uh, let's discuss about what is the need for continuous data loading okay suppose i have a business or my organization has a business that needs real time data for their data analysis or they, for their business analysis that means they don't want bulk loads of data from yesterday's or last week's or last month they want real time data that means whenever some event is happening they want that uh, event recorded and loaded into the table uh, suppose uh, let's take any um, example okay where we see the continuous data loads okay suppose let's take the crickbuzz or crick info example so we if we don't have choice to watch cricket matches what we do we generally follow uh, any cricketing websites like crick info or crickbuzz so there if you see the screen will be auto refreshed for every 5 5 seconds or 10 seconds and it will be giving the live scores right how that will happen so someone is definitely putting the data into database so so that we can see that means whenever uh, a ball is being bowled okay within next 1 uh, second or 2 seconds they are updating the scores in the database and we can see that how that is happening okay that means continuous data loads are happening whenever the event is occurring immediately we can see uh, the data is getting loaded into the table and uh, user can uh, uh, see the data or uh, a real time uh, user can use the data for their analysis so that's why the continuous loading is uh, important in uh, um, real world okay so this <coughs> this uh, continuous loading is designed to load small volumes of data and incrementally make them available for analysis okay so if we are loading the real time data definitely it will be not like huge data like uh, thousands or lakhs or millions of data it will be like uh, only tens or hundreds of data because we are loading uh, minute by minute or every 5 minutes or every 1 hour continuously we are loading right so if there is any need to load the data real time data uh, we go for continuous loading okay so live or real time data we are processing and loading into snowflake tables snow pipe loads data within minutes after files are added to the stage and submitted for ingestion okay so for snow pipe we have to do some settings actually so first of all we have to create a storage integration object then we have to set some event triggering notifications that means suppose i have uh, one external uh, storage provider okay aws from aws to uh, i have to load the uh, data into snowflake tables okay aws s3 buckets to snowflake tables that means i have a s3 location okay and whenever some file appears in that uh, s3 location immediately uh, my query should be triggered and data should be loaded so for that uh, file appears in the s3 bucket that is the event right so whenever that event happens there will be a trigger to our snowflake okay so the file is uh, ready for processing in the s3 bucket and you can process and the query will run snow pipe will run automatically and it will pick up pick, pick up that file and process the files and loads the data okay so that's how snow pipe works first of all we have to create a storage integration object then Uh, we have to set some event uh, um, notification event triggering notifications uh, in in one of our next uh, in one of our, my next videos definitely i will explain how to create a snow pipe how to create storage integration object okay how we can set that uh, event triggering notifications and uh, 
how we can load the data continuously from external stages to uh, Snowflake by using Snowpipe. We'll see in, in one of my next videos. Okay. So this continuous loads ensures users have the latest data for their business analysis. I told right already. So whenever we are using Snowpipe and loading the data, then we can expect like real time data is available in the Snowflake tables and that will be useful for the business analysis. Okay. Snowpipe uses compute resources provided by Snowflake. So unlike uh, uh, bulk loading there we have to uh, provide our warehouse name virtual warehouse name but here uh, snowpipe uses compute resources provided by snowflake that means we don't need to use our virtual warehouse okay uh, because it's a serverless task that uh, snowflake is a serverless task that means we don't need to supply any server that means virtual warehouse name while loading the data and there will be a separate charge for this serverless task as this this is a not free service offered by snowflake but there will be a separate uh, charges for all the um, serverless tasks provided by the snowflake okay the copy statement in the pipe pipe definition supports the same copy transformation options okay so inside the snowpipe again if we want to load the data into snowflake from external stages definitely we have to write a copy command okay the copy command works uh, similar to the bulk loading so however we prepare the copy command in the bulk loading the same way we prepare and all the options supported by by the copy command okay uh, will be supported in the snowpipe also okay so you will get a good idea while while i explain uh, how to create a snowpipe in uh, next videos okay So now this is the syntax of copy command. How we can write copy command to load the data from external or internal stage to Snowflake table. Okay, this is a copy into table name. Okay, so we can put a, a copy into table name or fully qualified table name. Uh, that means uh, database name dot schema name dot table name. Fully qualified table name always means it's like a database name dot uh, schema name dot table name. Okay, from at the rest stage okay i'll come to this part later okay from the stage object and we have to specify file format suppose i have file in aws s3 bucket so the file format i have to specify which file it's a csv file or json file or parquet file okay that file format i have to specify okay and uh, first row do we need to ignore the first row so like some properties uh, this file format object is a set of some properties we'll explain in uh, this one also in the next video and files okay so if i have some four or five files to be loaded if i want to load all the files at a time i can provide all the file names by separating comma files equals to so within uh, parenthesis we can mention file name one file name two up to any n number of files you can specify like this otherwise if you have uh, any pattern file pattern that means suppose I have a file lock, uh, like customer uh, customer underscore date so every day one file is coming okay so the file is uh, um, okay the file contains like the file name underscore date okay so every day the file will be coming like that in that case what we can do instead of specifying the file names we can specify the pattern of files suppose i have uh, some hundred of files i don't want to mention all hundred file names here okay instead of putting all the hundred files here in the parenthesis i can simply put a pattern like uh, we can mention the pattern like this dot star the file pattern dot star okay suppose i have uh, customer 1 customer 2 customer 3 like that or uh, customer underscore january customer underscore february like that so what i can do i can put simply pattern equals to dot star customer dot star that means all the file names that contains the word customer will be processed and loaded into snowflake so we we can use either files or the file pattern okay and there are some other optional properties okay We'll discuss this uh, optional property some other time but uh, this is the syntax of the copy command and now let's come to the stage okay so this stage can be an internal stage or external stage 
suppose if i have files in the external stage uh, external cloud storage provider like aws s3 buckets or azure containers okay here i have to mention a stage object uh, external stage name otherwise if it is a internal stage uh, okay so first we put the files into internal stages then process right so i have to mention the stage name okay that means i i already explained stage is nothing but it's the location of the file where the files exist suppose we are mentioning these files right where the files exist actually it can be external stage or it can be internal stage but this gives the location of the files okay so this is the syntax of the copy command copy into table name from the stage that means the location of the files and file format like uh, we have to specify the file form file properties here we'll explain you this uh, in later videos and we have to mention either uh, the file names or the file patterns okay and we can set some other additional properties as well okay we'll see this uh, uh, optional properties in some other video okay but this is the syntax of copy command okay as of now these are the locations supported by the copy command like uh, the first one is local environment that means it can be a uh, it can be our windows desktop or uh, uh, linux server it it is our local environment it can be anything okay and uh, it supports three external storage providers amazon s3 uh, google cloud storage and microsoft azure as of now uh, snowflake supports loading the data from these uh, uh, three external stages and uh, local machines okay and the file formats these are the file format supported by snowflake that means we can process uh, csv files we can process json avro orc parquet xml we can process any of these files and load the data into snowflake tables so csv files are like um, uh, they are structured files it will contain some structure and we can easily load but the other file types like json avro orc parquet they are not structured right they are semi structured file so we have a concept called variant data type if we want to process these files and load the data into snowflake uh, there is a variant data type uh, we can use i have already explained uh, how to load the semi structured data into snowflake in one of my videos you can watch you can watch there how we can process a semi structured uh, file and load into snowflake okay so what are the other ways to load the data into snowflake so i was explaining we can uh, either load the data from uh, our local machines or from external storage providers to snowflake by using a copy command or snowpipe but what are the other ways we can load the data into snowflake tables okay definitely we can use etl tools so etl you know right extract transform and load okay so a snowflake has drivers or connectors to many of this uh, uh, etl tools suppose uh, uh, there are etl tools in the market like metillion data stage informatica hevo azure data factory azure synapse okay so we can connect to snowflake with any of this etl tool uh, and we can either read uh, read the data from snowflake or we can write the data into snowflake very easily okay and suppose if i want to transform the data while loading into snowflake suppose i have a external stage i am reading the data from external stage and writing the data into snowflake in between if i want to transform some data like uh, i want to read i want to reordering of columns suppose if i have a uh, file with columns like uh, a b c d e in order but i want to load in the order uh, b a d c e like that i can do uh, if i want to omit any columns suppose i have a large file with 100 columns but i want to load only 10 columns into snowflake so i can do i can uh, fetch only the required columns data from the file and we can uh, perform string operations like uh, uh, we can apply trimming we can apply substring okay and we can use other functions like uh, case cast we can use and uh, sequence number suppose uh, if i want to um, load the sequence numbers for the records getting loaded into snowflake uh, by using co a concept called sequence we can load 
okay and if I, if i want to set any auto increment fields suppose if i want to if i don't want to mention uh, uh like uh, suppose if i want to mention any sequence number uh, that will not start from 1 if you use sequence numbers it will automatically by default starts from 1 but i want to start from some 100 or 1000 or 10000 like that and i can choose the increment value also i can increment it by 1 or 2 so we can do that by using auto increment fields we'll explain while uh, explaining the pra practicals okay while ex while executing the queries we'll show you how to do how to apply sequence numbers how to uh, use auto increment fields in snowflake okay so like this we can apply some of the transformations while uh, loading the data uh, from stages to snowflake okay let's uh, uh, go to snowflake and uh, try to load some data and uh, do some transformations while loading the data into snowflake okay i have prepared all the queries already let me copy the same to snowflake and we'll run okay so first of all i want to create a database okay there i will create some tables and load the data from aws to uh, this snowflake tables okay so we can create a database by using this command create database and database name okay so the database has been created if you want to check you can uh, just uh, refresh the database uh, menu here okay now we can see there is a database with the name mydb okay so we can set uh, uh, we can choose this uh, database by using this command use database mydb or we can select from here okay so now our database is ready and let's open the database so here we have two schemas default information schema and default public schema so i'm going to operate in the public schema now i'll be creating the tables in the public schema and loading them okay so first of all loading the data into any table before loading data into any table we have to create some tables right so i am creating a table called loan payment table okay uh, with the fields like loan id loan status principal amount terms effective date due date etc okay so this is the syntax to create the tables create or replace table table name with a list of fields and data types okay so i have created a table okay so let's check the data select star from the public uh, uh, schema name dot loan payment table okay initially there are no records in the table now how to load the data by using copy command so i have explained the copy command already right so copy into the table name okay copy into table name from the external storage location okay so uh, i am not creating any external stage now but i am directly using the publicly available s3 buckets okay uh, this is one of the publicly available s3 bucket and there are some files in this bucket okay so i am directly pointing to that public s3 bucket okay in the later videos we'll see how to create a aws free account how to create s3 buckets and how to upload files there and how to extract those files and load into snowflake we'll see later for now we can use uh, for our data loading exercise we can just use uh, the publicly available s3 buckets and the files already available there okay so this is one of the external stage okay i am directly without creating the stage i am directly pointing to that url or the location okay and i am mentioning the file format so here in this uh, s3 bucket there are many files okay so one of that is loan payment data dot csv okay so this file format is uh, uh, we have to mention the file format file format properties i told right so there are many properties but now we can i'm mentioning only the file type field delimiter which is comma okay file type is csv field delimiter is comma and skip header equals to one that means first column first row contains the column names that's why i want to skip that uh, header row okay that's why i'm mentioning this property if we mention skip header equals to zero it will load the first line as well but uh, as my first line contains column names i don't want to load that record into the table okay so let me execute this 
okay no active warehouse selected so we have selected maybe this we have selected right okay let me run again copy into this table what it is you know active warehouse in the current session select an active warehouse use warehouse command okay let me resume this okay now tr try to run this okay why it is saying like that it is active warehouse only we have selected okay so just go back to the account admin and uh, choose the warehouse and try to run it is green only that means it should be active no active warehouse selected in the current session select an active warehouse with the use warehouse command okay let's use the same this is strange i never encountered this maybe for the long time this session was inactive this issue is because of that okay let's ignore that and now run the command copy command okay so now it is saying from this file uh, it has loaded 500 records into the table okay so it it shows the output like this this is the file loaded the status is completed if there are any errors then it will say like failed okay number of rows parsed and number of rows loaded into the table and error limit that means after one error uh, the file loading will be failed and the loading will be aborted if there are any errors at the first error itself it will abort the load okay and there are no errors seen okay so now let's check the data okay so we have created the table we have loaded the data from this uh, publicly available s3 bucket to the table now let's check the data same okay now we can see here so earlier the table was empty now after loading the loan payment details into the loan payment table uh, this is how the data looks like loan id loan status principal amount okay times effective date due date we can see all the fields loaded here okay so this is how we can load the data this is very simple uh, the table should be available in the uh, database then we have to create some stages or we can directly point to the external stages and we have to mention file formats and just trigger the copy command it will load the data okay so this is how we can load the data into snowflake tables now let's see some transformations even okay let me take the commands okay copy it to here okay now we'll see okay so now in this examples i want to create one external stage and i want to use that external stage for our data loads okay so that will get some little idea on uh, external stages okay so first of all i want to create a schema called external stages to uh, uh, to hold uh, to put all my stage objects okay so i am creating the stage objects here right so this is the database object stage database object okay so i want to keep all these uh, uh, stage objects in one schema called external stages that's why i'm creating a schema uh, by using the syntax create or replace schema my db i'm creating the schema in the external stages okay so let's create a schema now you can just refresh here okay so external stages schema has been created okay now i am creating a stage so how to create a stage it's very easy okay the syntax is create or replace stage create or replace stage the stage object name okay it is like database dot schema dot the stage name i am giving the stage name as aws external stage okay and the url is whatever i have used in my previous examples while loading the loan payment data the same publicly available bucket okay this is the bucket location we have used right so i am mentioning the same location 
okay so whenever i use this uh, external stage in the next queries it will be pointing to this location publicly available s3 bucket location okay so here uh, uh, the file formats is optional if we want to mention the file format here itself we can do otherwise we can ignore that so this is the command to create a stage object so let's create the stage object okay stage object successfully created now so this is the publicly available s3 bucket right now i want to see the list of files available in this bucket for that we have a command called list in snowflake so we have to simply mention list at the rate and the stage object name so what is my stage object name uh, so this is the stage object name so we can simply uh, trigger this sql query list at the rate and the stage object name okay so this is how we can see list of files available here so here it is showing three files one is loan payments data we already processed this data and loaded into the table and the second one is order details data so we are going to work with this file now in this examples and there is one more uh, file called sample data dot csv okay so in the publicly uh, public s3 bucket we have total three files we can use this for our practice okay so here i am mentioning the complete stage object name right so if we are already pointing to some database and schema we can simply write query like this list at the rate okay aws no need to write fully qualified object name okay no need to mention schema or a database or everything so simply here we can write list at the rate the stage object name if we are pointing to correct database and schema name here okay so we have to set the database and schema here okay now so the, uh, i'll go through some cases okay the first case is uh, just viewing data from the external stage now my requirement is i don't want to see i don't want to load the data into the uh, table first of all i want to see the how how the data looks like in the file okay so for that we can write a command like this select okay uh, dollar one dollar two dollar three uh, will come to what is mean by this okay select these things from okay the stage object okay uh, and in this stage location we have three files right i don't want to fetch the data from all three files i, I in particular I, I want to fetch the data from this order details file okay that's why i'm mentioning with just a slash okay uh, we can mention the file if there are subfolders like i have a folder like uh, csv files okay so we can separate like this okay so external stage under this we have subfolder like csv files we can mention like this and we can put one more uh, forward slash okay and order details okay like this let me remove this okay so we have three files and i want to load the data from this order details file i i don't want to load but i just want to see the data from this order details dot csv file so what is this dollar one dollar two dollar three so this is nothing but uh, the list of columns okay so dollar one means the first column in the in this file the second column third column fourth column fifth column sixth column i want to uh, let's hope there are six fields uh, six columns in this order details dot csv that's why i'm keeping dollar one to dollar six okay so let's execute this so we don't know the names first of all right so i that's why i'm using just dollar one dollar two like that okay so let me run this query and you can see here okay there are uh, it is fetching six columns and uh, even we are not ignoring the first column right so whenever we create a stage object with the default uh, by default the file type will be csv okay so if we don't mention any file format here by default the um, file format will be csv and by default the uh, this one there is a property called um, ignore skip header equals to one right this this default property will be zero that means it will include the header also that's why it is showing the first column uh, first row uh, with the column names order id amount profit like this but if we mention like in the file uh, file properties if we mention like skip header equals to one 
then this row will not come okay it will skip the first line first record okay so now you can see so even in the results you can see like it is displaying dollar one dollar two dollar three dollar four like this but but i don't want to uh, uh, i don't want to display my field names like this i want to give some field names for this dollar one dollar two okay how we can do that now clearly we are saying this is the order id that's why i'm saying uh, giving alias names to the fields select dollar one as order id dollar two as amount so here we can see dollar three as a profit dollar four as a quantity dollar five as category and dollar six as subcategory that's how i am giving the alias names from the uh, stage object okay and the file okay so let's run this command so i have just given the alias names to the above query now let's see how it is displaying okay so this is uh, uh, instead of dollar uh, one dollar two it is giving the field names now order id amount profit quantity category and subcategory okay so this is how we can view the data now i have a requirement i don't want to get all the columns available in the file i want to get only specific columns uh, that means uh, i want to get uh, the first field fourth field and second field okay or otherwise i want to just get order id quantity and amount okay if i want i can fetch like this okay select dollar one as order id dollar four as quantity and dollar two as amount so we can mention uh, the columns in any order okay so let me execute this okay now it is getting only order id quantity and amount okay so if we want to uh, skip the header we can mention the properties here okay uh, in the stage object file properties we can give skip header equals to one so that we can skip this first line i'll explain that while explaining the stage objects and file formats okay just ignore that for now okay so this is my first case uh, without loading if i want to see the data from the uh, external storage files uh, from AWS S3 buckets or Azure containers, this is the same process. Okay, by using this dollar one, we can get those fields. Okay, uh, and we we can give alias names like this, and we can fetch uh, the uh, columns in in any order. Okay. Now this is uh, case one, just viewing the data from the external stage. Now transforming the data while loading into the uh, Snowflake table. Okay. <coughs> suppose my case 2 is i want to load only required fields i don't want to uh, load all the fields i want to just uh, suppose in the, in our next example okay uh, i'm creating a table called uh, order underscore external order underscore external stage here i want to load only two columns order id and amount okay now let's create a table with this uh, with the same uh, uh, metadata order id and amount okay now i am writing my copy command like this okay copy into okay my db dot public dot order ex this is the table i had created so if you want you can check here okay public tables uh, in the earlier example we have created a loan payments right that that is the table and now we have created the orders underscore ex table okay so how to load the data into this table okay and we we need to just uh, fetch only two fields order id and amount from this file okay so this is how we can write the copy command copy into table name from and within parentheses we have to write whatever we just wrote in the above statement okay so here okay select dollar one dollar one comma dollar two from this stage object i am giving alias name for this stage uh, stage object as yes okay that's why here i am selecting s dot dollar one s dot dollar two okay so my dollar one is order id and dollar two is the amount column that's why i am just uh, um, extracting or selecting only these two fields now here i want to skip the header we have seen in the previous example right in the first row uh, the column names were coming i don't want to load the column names that's why i am mentioning the file format here so we can mention the file format in the stage object definition or we can mention the file formats in the copy command also okay so file format this is the file format 
okay so what is the file format type equals to csv field uh, delimiter equals to comma and skip header equals to one so i want to skip the first row okay and if you see here in the previous example i have given like uh, uh, in the from class itself i have given the file name but here if you see i am not giving like that okay i am mentioning the file name explicitly here okay we can do either both options are available here we can put one slash and we can give the file name or we can give like this so i want to specifically load the order details dot csv file that's why i'm mentioning like this okay copy into table name from okay within parenthesis we have to write what are all the we have to select what are all the fields we want to extract from this stage object okay and we have to mention the file format uh, and we have to mention the file name or file pattern as we discussed in the theory part right we can mention either of the file file names or file format okay so let me run this command okay so there are some 1500 records in this file and all 1500 records loaded into this file just to validate the same okay now you can see in the table uh, data so there are only two fields order id and amount so that is our requirement right only load only the required fields so that's why we have created this table with only two fields so this is working as expected and this is how we can write the copy command for loading the required fields okay so our case 3 is okay i want to do some transformations okay so i want to do some transformations here so for the time creating a table okay in this table you can see like uh, this is the same uh, file i i uh, I am going to load this order details dot uh, csv file. I am going to load, but here while loading the data into the table, I want to do some transformations. Like, so I want to load order id, I want to load profit, I want to load amount, I want to load uh, uh, one column like category substring. That means in the category, I don't want to uh, load all the characters. I want to extract only first five characters of the uh, category okay and in and also i want to ca concatenate a category and subcategory into one field okay that's why i'm saying category underscore concatenation here I, I will be using substring to extract only five characters of the category okay and also i want to calculate profit or loss okay so if, if we look at the previous example these three fields are not available in the file so we have to calculate how we can derive these three fields okay so by using some transformations we can derive these three fields so if we see the file definition we can see only order id profit and amount these details are directly not available in the file so i am go going to derive these fields okay so how let's check so first of all uh, create this table okay the table has been uh, created if you want to you can uh, just check here okay anyway we are just a copy uh, replacing the same file you see here right so we we are writing the command create or replace the same table has been refreshed okay or replaced okay so the table is there now how to write the copy command for this so with some transformations okay so forget the outer part now let's come to the inner part okay because the outer part i have already explained copy into table name from the stage object the file format equals to i am mentioning the file format is file format properties and this is the file i want to load into the table now let's come to the inner query okay so here also i am selecting uh, from the external stage object okay i am giving the alias name as yes and i am selecting the fields uh, like s dot dollar one so my first field is order id okay and uh, the second field what i want to select profit so profit is available in the third column that's why i am selecting s dot dollar three first and amount is available in the second uh, field so we have seen right here while uh, so here you can see dollar one is order id dollar three is profit dollar two is amount okay that's why i'm selecting like this okay uh, amount is in the dollar two field now my requirement is i want to uh, fetch only first five characters of this uh, uh, category field that's why i am writing a substring like this substring dollar uh, dollar five one comma five this is the syntax of substring right 
that's why I'm uh, uh, from the first character I want to extract the five characters okay so that means first five characters of the category field okay so this is how I am deriving so here we are using a string function called substring the next one is concatenating okay so concatenating concatenation means combining the two fields okay so here I am combining fields 5 and 6 my requirement is concatenate category and subcategory into the same field okay that's why I am saying concat of dollar 5 or dollar 6 or we can use simply like this simply dollar uh, 5 double uh, um, the, the symbol and uh, double pipe symbol and dollar 6 this is same as concatenation of uh, two fields okay if there are, if we want to concatenate more than two fields also we can do just we have to mention this uh, symbol between the field names okay double pipe okay so here i am using concatenation function and in the next statement i am using case so i have to uh, derive the, the last field profit or loss so how we can say profit or loss okay so whenever our dollar s3 is less, is less than 0 then loss that means so in, in dollar 3 what we have in dollar 3 profit so prof, if the profit is less than 0 that means it's loss right and if the profit is greater than 0 that means we are getting profit that means if the profit is a negative number that is we are mentioning as loss if the profit column uh, is holding a positive integer then we are saying it's a profit okay so we are creating just we are just deriving a profit or loss statement okay so case when uh, this um, profit less than or equals to zero then loss else profit like this i am using case function also here case statement also i am using for deriving something okay like this we can use any number of transformations okay while loading the data here i am i have just applied three things substring concatenation and case case statement like this any of the sql supported functions we can use while loading the data okay so let me execute this statement and let's look at the results okay so all the 1500 records from the file to table loaded now let's check the same from the table so here you can see clearly okay the order id profit amount and let's check the uh, three derived fields so if you see category and concat uh, category and subcategory concatenated into the same field furniture bookcases clothing stole clothing handkerchief okay electronics electronic games electronics phones like uh, both the ca category and subcategory fields concatenated here and here you can check only it contains only first five characters of the category like uh, furniture right so if you are ni first five characters c-l-o-t-h first five characters l-e-c-t first five characters of the category and uh, when we look at this profit or loss here you can see uh, here here we have profit column so it is a negative number that's why it's loss again it's a negative number it's loss so if you see here here we have a profit we have positive numbers that's why it is saying profit okay like this we can transform the data and load it into the table okay so we can apply uh, the required transformations okay based on our business requirements we can apply any sql uh, functions here okay it can be a string function it can be a numeric function it can be a um, mathematical functions or it can be a, a date or a timestamp functions we can use any functions while loading the data based on our requirement okay so this is our third case how to apply some basic transformations while loading the data into snowflake table okay now the fourth one okay so here my requirement is loading the sequence number in columns suppose if we have any um, so what i can say any key fields numeric key fields like surrogate key i don't want to load that field every time whenever a record is getting inserted into some table okay uh, the next possible number should be loaded suppose uh, our first time the sequence will start from 1 1 to 10 suppose in the first load i have loaded 10 records it will stop at 10 so the next time what will happen whenever next record gets loaded next time it will assign the number 11 that's how i want to 
means I want to maintain one sequence ID column in the table with the sequence number starting from 1. Okay, that is my requirement. So how we can do this in Snowflake? I just want to assign the sequence number to the records will uh, to the records loaded into the table. Okay. So how we can do that in Snowflake? First of all, we have to create a sequence for that. The syntax is create sequence sequence one. Okay. Now this will be holding a field called next val. So it will be incre increasing automatically. First time it will hold one. Whenever we apply this sequence one dot next value to the table, uh, suppose first time we have loaded 10 records, it will be incrementing by 1, 2, 3 like that. So it will hold 10 value 10 by end of the first load. Next time whenever next record 11th record is coming, it will get the next value as 11 and it will load uh, uh, the sequence ID as 11 for that record. So let's see how we can do, how we can apply this. Okay. So while creating the table itself, we can simply mention uh, a default property like this. Okay. So this is my loan payment table structure where I had uh, where I have loan ID, loan status principal. We have used the same table right in the previous example. Okay. So I am taking the same table. I extra by extra, I am adding one more column sequence ID. Okay. So this is the extra column I have added in the table. So let's create a table like this. Okay, create our replace table name and this extra uh, field name with sequence ID and I am just uh, mentioning default sequence one dot next value. Here our sequence one is the sequence we had created in the previous step. So every time it will be incrementing and getting the next value from that sequence and it will be loading into the table into this sequence ID field. Okay, now let's see how it will work. Okay. Now what what I am doing? I am just loading the table, loan payment table. I have replaced the table. That means uh, this table has zero records now. Okay. How I am loading the table? Copy into table name. Okay. Copy into table name into these fields. Okay. Loan ID, loan status. I am mentioning the column names explicitly here. In our previous example, we did not mention the column names explicitly, right? Here I am mentioning because. I, I don't want to load this sequence. This is by default a value will be loaded into this. So I want to skip this one. That's why I'm mentioning the remaining all column names here. If we want to skip any uh, any column name, th then definitely if you don't mention the column names, it won't work. It will throw some error. Whenever you want to skip or reorder the columns here, you have to explicitly mention that uh, uh, column list here. Okay. In the same order we are going to load. Now I am loading this file. Okay. I am loading this publicly available S3 bucket file. Okay. Into uh, this table into these fields. Okay. So my my first column from this uh, loan payments file will be loaded into loan ID. Second column into loan status like that. So we are not specifying any logic for sequence sequence ID. Right. Because we have mentioned a default property with um, sequence one and this is of numeric type. So let's uh, do this load copy into this table name and I'm explicitly mentioning the uh, column names from uh, this stage object and uh, loan payments file not stage object sorry from this S3 bucket and from loan payments data file and file format is uh, this is CSV file again uh, where field delimiter is comma and I don't want to process the first row. That's why I'm skipping header equals to one. Okay. So let's run this. Okay, now uh, 500 records are there in that file. All 500 records loaded into the table. Let's check how the data will appear now. Okay. So we can see there are 500 records loaded into the table and just ignore the sequence ID, but rest all the uh, fields loaded. Loan ID, loan status, principal amount, times and now comes to come to the sequence ID. So here you can see for the first record it has assigned one then for the next record two, like this like that it is incrementing. So next time if we load the data into this table what it will do after 500 the sequence will start from 501. Okay, but whenever you drop and re uh, recreate this sequence object again it will start from one. Okay, until that until we drop the value in the sequence will be uh, incrementing by one. Okay. 
so like that we can use sequences in snowflake for uh, generating sequence numbers so to generate uh, like um, surrogate keys okay in our data warehouses we use this uh, sequence property so like this also we can do some basic transformations okay this is fourth case and my fifth case okay so this is the last case uh, in data loading exercises okay where i want to use use auto increment so you have some if you have worked on some other databases you will have some idea on auto increment so auto, what is auto increment even though we don't mention any derivation for for this id uh, for this column so if we mention a default property like this auto increment uh, start value and increment value so the values will be loading by default into this table so now i am creating a table called loan payment to with the same structure loan id loan status principal terms and other fields but uh, extra i am adding one more field loan sequence id okay so loan sequence id of type uh, numeric number type and uh, this is the property how we have to mention okay so auto increment that means increment the value of this column uh, automatically even though we don't specify in the transformations or in the uh, select class okay so uh, we have to start this value so we can start with any value we can start at 1 2 3 4 100 thousand 1 million any any value we can start now in our case i want to start this value with 1001 okay and i want to increment the value by 1 that means for the first record it will be loaded as 1001 for the next record it will be uh, uh, like 1002 like this and it will be incrementing so suppose first time we have loaded the thousand records so uh, this auto increment will start stop at uh, 2000 right it will start from 1000 and it will stop at 2000 and whenever we load the next set of records it will start from 2001 okay it will be auto incrementing by default but the starting value is 1001 and increment is 1 so we can choose our increment value as uh, 2 3 like that anything if we do 2 here so for the first record it will be loaded as 1001 and uh, for the next record it will be loaded as 1003 like that okay but uh, in general we choose the increment value always by one only start with uh, some value and increment by one so this is how we can set uh, while creating the table itself we can set this auto increment property okay so create this table and let's run the same copy command we have used in the previous example copy into this loan payment to table uh, into these fields and get the data from this uh, public s3 bucket uh, from the loan payments uh, uh, file and these are the file properties file format i'm mentioning as a csv file field element equals to comma and the skip header equals to one i don't want to process the first row okay so let me run this okay and uh, let's validate the data it is saying 500 records successfully loaded into the loan payment to table so let's validate the same select star from loan payment to table okay now it is showing so it has loaded all the data and when you observe the loan sequence id it is starting from 1001 1002 1003 like this okay it is started from 1001 and it is incrementing by one okay so just uh, it's a simple difference between sequence and uh, auto increment for sequence first of all we have to create a sequence and we have to get the next value from the sequence and here uh, the by default the uh, sequence value will start from one but when it comes to the auto increment no need to create any sequence before this we can simply use here but here uh, the flexibility is there we can start from any number okay it should be of a numeric type or number type okay and we can mention any starting value and we can uh, increment uh, by anything but in case of sequence it will start from one and it will be incrementing by default one okay so this is the difference between sequence and auto increment and this is how we do some basic transformations while loading the data into snowflake tables okay i hope this will help you uh, in my next set of videos, I will cover like uh, how to create uh, storage integration objects, how to create file format object, how, how to create uh, 
um, stage objects how we can extract the data from AWS or Azure and load the data into Snowflake okay in one of the session I'll cover that and in the next video I will cover like uh, internal stages so what are the types of internal stages how to work with internal stages how to install snow SQL and how to uh, uh, querying how to do querying uh, from snow sql will show that in one one of the video and in the next video i will uh, i will explain how to set up a snow pipe and how we can load con uh, load the data continuously by using snow pipe into snowflake tables okay i will do videos in future on all these topics okay i'm going to paste all these queries in the description of this video so that you can take uh, and you can practice okay and if you have any doubts, you can reach me on my email ID or you can mention in the comment section of this video. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any doubts, you can reach me on this email ID. Thank you.